Well, here we go. Welcome in Falcha to Random Thoughts from County Antrim, and I'm your host, David McDonald. My half hour, some stories, historical uh, information, some tales, yarns, and of course, as always, my random thoughts. A couple of announcements first. Uh, I will be at the Indie Irish Festival in Indianapolis on September 25th. It's a scaled-down version of the Indie Irish Festival. It's usually a three-day festival. They've scaled it down to one day. Uh, in this uh, pandemic, uh, still in the pandemic, I would almost said post-pandemic, but we are not yet post-pandemic. But that's in September. It'd be my first live event uh, since uh, February February of 2020. And then in October, I'm going to be at the Taos uh, Storytelling Festival in Taos, New Mexico. That's October 9th. Uh, I was invited to that some time ago, uh, and then they canceled the festival because of the pandemic. Uh, the numbers are looking better in the region, so they decided to put it back on. But yet again, it's a scaled-down version of what they had planned, and it'll be a single day, a uh, single evening, I think, uh, on Saturday, October 9. So I'll post to my website when I get some more information about uh, both those two festivals. But I have those two Yet another one in October, and that may be at three events in 2021, as compared to one event in 2020. Uh, so let's see how things improve uh, in, the, in the months and years to come. Well, tonight I thought I'd just tell you a story. Uh, and if I have time, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about that story. But uh, I'll just tell you the story to start. And it's entitled, uh, A Father, A Son, and a woman and it's a story about a father and a son uh, who lived together in a small village uh, in uh, in Ireland and uh, the father was widowed uh, and the two men is uh, the father and his adult uh, young but adult son uh, lived together in a small small farm just outside the village and the son grew to an age when uh, he began looking at young women with interest and he attended a, a, a crack in, uh, in, in the village when he saw what was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. She was gorgeous, and uh, the young man was smitten immediately. And he got up enough nerve, and he uh, asked her to dance, and to uh, his surprise, she said yes. And they, uh, they danced and danced all night long. And uh, in, in the weeks and months to come, they became a couple. Uh, for several weeks, the two of them were, uh, went everywhere together. Now, after a month or so of this, the, the, the young man thought it was time uh, to bring this young lady over to his house uh, and meet his father. So we scheduled a Sunday afternoon, uh, a Sunday afternoon dinner together with just the three of them, the father, the son, and this young woman. And when he brought the woman over to his home, he sat her on the sofa, and then he went into the kitchen. See, the son, between the, the son and the father, there was the son who did all the cooking. And he set the table, and uh, while he did that, he did the, uh, pulled out the china, that his father and son had never used uh, after uh, the mother died uh, was her fine china. It was a bit dusty, but he cleaned that off and he set a cloth on the table, the finest dinnerware that they owned in their modest home, and they cooked a delicious uh, dinner. Um, and then they sat down for dinner, the three of them. Um, and it was a delicious dinner, and they had a wonderful conversation. And uh, after dinner, the three of them chatted some more. And th the son thought the conversation was going quite well uh, and that the young lady was making a va very favorable impression on his father. Uh, and so the son was a bit surprised when his father turned to the woman and said, You must know, young lady, that my son is not the man for you. The woman then said, well, sir, I'm very fond of your son. I believe he may, he may indeed be the man for me. 
And what makes you think he is not? And the father said, well, he is weak, both in uh, spirit and in body. Uh, he will not make a good husband for you. A woman as beautiful and as witty uh, and as uh, brilliant as you could find a much better match than my son. Now the woman was shocked and said, what makes you think your son is weak in body or weak in spirit? He says, well, I will show you, the father. And then he got up and walked over to the window. And you'll see out there, there's a partially buried rock in our yard. And we need to remove that rock in order to add a little bit more space to our, our plow, uh, air, plowable area, increase the yield on our farm. And I will wager that my son cannot dig that rock out. Now the young man was, grew quite angry at this. He was angry that his father had so little confidence in him. And he was embarrassed that his father would say such a thing in front of this woman. So he went outside, went over to the shed, grabbed a shovel, and then he just started digging, digging out the rock. He said, I'll show him. And he dug and dug and dug and dug, and he spent an hour digging around the rock, and then another hour digging out the rock. And it turned out the rock was huge. You could only see the top of it visible uh, above, the, above the ground level. But the rock itself was huge, way underground. And after digging for several hours, the sun could not find the bottom of the rock. And he eventually gave up and went back into the house. And the father said to the young woman, You see, I told you he could not do it. Well, you are right, said the girl, said the young woman. I'll find a better match. I'll find a better husband, I think, than him. And I think it's time for me to go home. And with that, she left the house. Now, the young man was quite distraught over this. And uh, he was in a funk uh, for weeks and weeks after that. And it was difficult to say what was worse, that his father thought so little of him, or that he, he lost the woman of his dreams. He thought it was, she was, the woman of his dreams. Now weeks and weeks went by, and the son eventually grew out of this depressed mode. Uh, and he went to another crack in the village and, uh, on a Saturday night, and he saw a pretty girl. Um, it was very attractive, and he uh, got enough nerve to ask her to dance. And they danced some more, and they got along quite brilliantly. And they continued to see each other quite regularly after that for weeks and weeks. Uh, and they were creating the, the kind of bond that often leads a young man and a young woman uh, into a serious relationship. And so he decided uh, it was time to take this young woman to his home to meet his father. And he invited her over to a Sunday dinner. And they brought her to dinner, and the son set the table again, and he cooked the food, and it was a delicious meal. And the three of them sat around the kitchen table and had a wonderful conversation. And uh, it seemed to him that everyone was getting along, and the young man just began to get his hopes up again. And that is till the father turned to the young woman and said, you know, young lady, uh, my son is not the man for you. And the woman said, well, sir, I'm very fond of your son, and I believe he is indeed the man for me. What makes you think he is not? And the father, as you probably figured out now, he said uh, he is weak in both body and in spirit. He will not make you a good husband. A woman as pretty and as witty as you uh, can find a much better husband. And she asked, what makes you think that he would not make me a good husband? He says, I will show you. There's a partially buried rock in the yard there. And we need to move that rock in order to add more space to grow our plants, our crops. 
And I, I wager you, he could not dig it out. Well, the young man was now furious. Not this again, he thought. So uh, he figured, you know what, I dug a lot of it out months ago. I think I can do the rest today. So he rushed outside the house, went into the shed, grabbed his shovel, and began to dig around the rock. And he dig, dug, and he dug, and he dug for an hour, then two hours. And he still could not find the bottom of the rock. And at that point, he gave up. He went back into the house a little bit embarrassed. You see, I told you he could not do it, said the father. You were right, said the woman. I think it's time for me to go home. And with that, she left the house. Now the young man was totally depressed and wondered why his father thought, after all these years living together, why his father thought so little of him. Now months passed before the young man uh, gathered the courage uh, to go to another crack, and he eventually did. Uh, we found a pleasant girl. She was somewhat plain, but very pleasant, and, and, and he asked her to dance, and she said yes. And they danced, and then he sat at the table, and they talked, and they danced some more. And she was a delightful woman, and the young man was smitten yet again. Um, and he began to believe that maybe she was the woman for him. And wherever he went, she went. And wherever she went, he went. And he thought maybe it was time to introduce this young woman to his father. So he made an arrangement. Sunday afternoon, there was going to cook her dinner with, her, with his father. And he cooked the meal, set the finest table, the best they had. And the three of them sat around, they ate dinner, and they had a wonderful conversation. And it was just a very, very delightful afternoon. And the young man began to think that he might be spared embarrassment this time. And that is until the father said to the young woman, you know, young lady, my son is not the man for you. The woman then said, Well, I'm very fond of your son, and I believe he is the man for me. What makes you think that he is not? And you know the story. He's weak in uh, spirit and body, and uh, he will not make you a good husband. You could find a much better match, and I'll show you why. And he pointed out to the, uh, to the rock and said, We need to remove that rock in order to plant more crops. And uh, he's unable to do it. It just demonstrates that he's weak in spirit and in body. So now the young man, again furious, went outside, grabbed the shovel, thinking this time I'll do it. And he dug and dug and dug. And he was sweating because it was hard work. And all the while he's doing this, the, the young woman is inside with the father. And he's looking out and seeing him work so hard trying to dig out this rock. And she decided it was time for her to go outside. So she went outside. She went over to the shed. She grabbed another shovel. And she began to dig as well. And the two of them are digging around this rock, trying to find the bottom. And the two of them together finally reached the bottom of the rock. Then they tied a rope around the rock, and they hitched that rope to a, to a tractor. And the young man took a long pole to kind of lever up the rock. And while he's doing that, she got on the tractor and started pulling the tractor in the opposite direction. And after doing that for about almost another hour, the rock began to move up just a little bit. They adjusted the rope some more, and they moved it some more, and adjusted the rope, moved the tractor some more, kept sticking in the lever. And eventually, the rock came out of the hole. The two of them together had successfully removed the rock from the yard. Now, the son was quite proud. He said to his father, he went dashing into the house, said to his father, You see, I did it. 
And I don't know why you ever doubted me and put me through such a challenge. And, and the father said, well, son, I never did doubt you. I always knew that you could do whatever you needed to do. And I always knew that you would make a fine husband uh, to a lucky woman, for a lucky woman. And you see, I was not testing you at all. I was, the te I was testing the woman that you had chosen. And you see, it doesn't matter whether she's pretty or plain. Uh, what does matter is that she will be your partner for the rest of your life. And it's obvious to me, and it should be obvious to you, that you have chosen the right woman. And that's the end of the story. So I think I've got a little time. Uh, again, that's a story. A father, a son, and a woman. Now I first heard, I think I have some time to tell you a little bit about that story. I first heard this story uh, in Ireland. Uh, and I was told by Claire Mora Murphy, who's a brilliant storyteller. And I revised the story a little bit. There's a dog whining here. Let me get rid of this dog. Um, and I, I see suspect Claire revised the story a little bit as well because I don't think it was her entirely uh, because there are many many versions of stories about uh, a father uh, through most of the story during most of the story he appears to be testing his son um, but he is actually testing the young women who are uh, interested in his son so there are a lot of versions of that story Claire did hers um, and I just did a little version of mine. And I've only told this story, um, I told it a few times in front of a live audience. Um, I don't know why, I just it's on my repertoire, but I just don't always bring it out. Um, but I did tell the story at a festival once where I made one of the, one person in the audience, I made her cry. Um, and it was, uh, it was in a tent. There was maybe 30, 40 people in the tent. Uh, the people that were using the tent before it was my turn were using it as a whiskey tasting. Um, and this woman was in the tent uh, for that. And then she didn't bother to leave when the whiskey tasting was over. And then I came on stage. So she may have had a fair amount of whiskey by the time I began my storytelling set. And uh, I told several stories, this one being one of them, and, and she, was, she was a lot of fun, actually. She was in the back of the audience. She sat in the last row, and she was very loud, and she was very vocal. So I kept pitching in and, and shouting things out while I was telling the story, which adds a new dimension to the story when somebody does that. And when I told this story, uh, you know, I, I got to the first time that uh, the young man brought a woman to his house and the father made that comment about, the, about him being not good enough for her. And she yelled out, Why, what kind of father is that? Why would he say such a thing about his son? I shouted that out in the middle of the story. And then I got to the second woman and... Um, Again, the father said, I don't think my son is good enough for you. And she said, uh, he did that again. That's got to be the worst father ever. It's time for the son to leave. You know, she just kept shouting these stuff out all the way through the story. Then I got to the third young woman uh, who ran out and pitched in and helped the son accomplish the goal. And I, I did the ending where the father said, I was testing her, not you. And... Uh, did the bit about uh, important to have a partner in life to go through the good times and the bad times and uh, support each other in whatever you had to do and would be a, a, a partner who would not watch you do your chores but help you through whatever you needed for help. And I got to that part. I looked over to her and I saw tears were coming down her eyes. And I got a little brief chance to talk with her after the uh, after the set, and uh, she just said, "I love your story, and it was wonderful, and I'm really glad I stayed to hear it." 
She didn't share with me why she was crying, although she still had the tears coming down her eyes. But it, but it obviously hit her in some fashion. And I'm not going to take credit for uh, making it my story that, that did it. But something resonated with her. And I don't know if it was her relationship with her father uh, or whether it was her finding you know, the right life partner or never finding the right life partner. I don't know what it was. But as I told that story, something hit her. And that's when the, the tears began to roll down her face. Now, I've uh, only time that's ever happened to me, only time I've ever been able to do that to an audience member. I've made people laugh uh, or chuckle, uh, and I've entertained people, but I've never had anybody cry before at one of my stories. So I may have to work on uh, this one or some other stories and see if I can get that same reaction. I don't know. I get strange pleasure. I mean, I get great pleasure out of seeing audience reaction. Maybe I get a strange pleasure out of seeing someone cry at one of my stories. In any event, uh, please come see me if you're in Indianapolis or in Taos, New Mexico or Ocean Shores, Washington. Uh, my only three shows I've got lined up for 2021. Uh, please share, like and share my uh, Facebook page and like and share this uh, this podcast. Like, love to increase the the viewership if I could. Send me an email at clandonnell at gmail.com if you got any questions, comments, complaints, whatever. I'll listen to them and I'll respond to them. And take a look at my website, uh, clandonnell. Uh, uh, what is my website? Uh, clandonnell.net. That's my website. I should have that memorized by now. But anyway, this is uh, July the 18th. We got another one coming up in July before we get into August. We're definitely summer up here in northern Michigan. I'm actually, when I wrap this up, I'm actually going to get on my boat. It's a sunny day. We don't have many of those in, in, in Michigan, uh, in northern Michigan. I'm going to get on my boat and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye. <laughs>